having C and denoted by this. Of any function fx, the Fourier transform, cosine transform is denoted like this and is equal to 2 upon pi under root. Integral of 0 to infinity fx and cos of sx dx. This is Fourier cosine transform. In terms of s variable parameter is written f to s. Similarly, we have Fourier sine transform of a function fx. It is denoted by fs or fs of parameter s. We have subscript s means sine. n is equal to 2 upon pi under root integral 0 to infinity fx sine of sx and dx. This is for your sine transform. Similarly, we can have the inverse of this fifth formula inverse for your sine transform. Obviously, with fx, n is equal to inverse of fcs. Inverse of FCS. Again, it is root of 2 upon pi integral 0 to infinity FCS cos of SX and DS. For your inverse for your cosine transforms. Similarly, we can find out inverse for your sine transform <coughs> again the value will be fx because it is inverse of sine transform so you see have inverse transform of for your sine transform and is equal to 2 of 1 pi under root and then integral from 0 to infinity uh, here, sine transform into sine of Sx and Ds. Here we integrate with respect to S linear. It's not S linear or S parameter is fixed. It is a kind of notation. In some books you will find the S variable will be used by omega, divided by W, divided by P. So that is a notation. X is also notation, it can be replaced by E. <coughs> if we are dealing with the signal problem, signal and system, then the variable X will be replaced by T variable, time variable. Okay? And S variable will be replaced by frequency variable. So these are the next four formulas that we need to learn and then we try to implement these formulas on the problems related to cosine and sine transform. Okay, let's start with an example. Thank you. 